This week's Ballistic Minute is brought to you by Alliance Custom Armory, rifles built to perform. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate bedding a rifle. Uh, for this project, what you're going to need is some epoxy, and which kind you use is, you know, up to you. You can use acker glass that you order from Brownells, or if you've got another source of a good, tough, hard epoxy, that's what you're going to want to use for your bedding compound. Uh, you're also going to need some packaging tape and some kind of release agent. There's a spray release agent you can use. What I like using is just Minwax paste finishing wax. So I'm going to go through the process here. Packaging tape is used as a spacer. So what we're going to want to do is pull the rifle apart. Pull it out of the stock and also you're going to want to remove the magazine box and the follower and spring from your bottom metal so that when we glue this all together that stuff is out of the way also remove the bolt from your barreled action you're going to not want to have those components in the rifle when we put this back together we just want to minimize uh, the chances of, of epoxy getting into that and messing it up so i also prefer to to do this without the trigger in but for this exercise the trigger was already in and and i'm not going to go through uh the process to pull the trigger off it's if i'm careful it's not going to be an issue but like i said it's probably better if it's not in okay so the first thing i'm going to do is apply tape to the front of the recoil lug and the three sides, bottom and the two sides, left and right, and the front side, so that when this is sitting in the, the stock, after I pull it all apart, I'm going to take that tape off, and what that tape acts as a spacer, so you've got the thickness of the tape on the sides, the bottom, and the front side, where this will slide in and out of there freely. And the bearing surface, when you have recoil pushing back against the stock, there will be no tape, so that will be... The side that actually contacts the stock and that'll be your mating surface that you want to be perfect so what i'm going to do is take this piece of packaging tape and apply it across the front of this recoil lug and obviously you don't get the whole recoil lug you're only going to get where the tape covers but that's pretty much not critical as long as you get the the bottom half of it that's going to be the critical part and then I'm going to fold it over onto the bottom side fold it over onto the sides also just like that then we're going to take a razor blade and cut the excess tape off and obviously a sharp blade makes this process easier which is not what I have and then on the corners I just slice up give yourself a little bit of extra tape there on the corners and slice up again if you've got a little excess tape here the tape is just adding as a spacer down in there so in these corners if you've got a little bit of extra tape there that's just going to give you a little bit more space in there that's that's non-critical so don't worry about having extra tape on the corners and then across the front just cut this piece of tape off and there we have it. Okay. Now we're going to apply the release agent. And what we want to do on this bedding job is provide a, a mirror image of the action in the stock so that as you pull this out and in for cleaning or whatever reason, when you put it back, it's going to go together exactly the same way as it was the first time, so it shouldn't affect how the gun shoots at all. But we don't want to glue it in the action, so we definitely want to 
do some release agent of some kind, in this case wax. So if I just take a little bit of this wax and put it everywhere that I'm going to have some epoxy resin, which is going to be all around this front action screw area, all the way around the recoil lug, and then I usually put it on at least an inch forward on the barrel too, because I'm going to have a little bit of ooze of the epoxy resin forward when I stick the recoil lug into the epoxy. Now sometimes you're just bedding the recoil lug and sometimes you're doing a full skim bed. Um, in the case of like an HS precision stock where you've got the aluminum bedding block and you really only contact the bedding block at the two ends, I usually just do the recoil lug and then where the two action screws are. This Macmillan stock, however, it, it does have aluminum pillars in it, but it contacts a, a bigger surface of this whole inletting. So I'm going to do a skim bed on the sides too, so up and around the magazine box area. There's a few critical spots where the trigger pin holes are. I'm going to try to avoid epoxy in those regions. Just get it where there's a where there's a big area of steel where it'll contact the stock. And then we're, what we're going to end up with is, is a nice surface on the inside of the stock where that action will mate in there perfectly. Okay, one other thing before I put the wax away, you're also going to want to coat the action screws. We're probably going to get a little bit of epoxy resin around the action hole, which means we'll get a little bit on the screws. So you're going to want to coat the threads pretty good on these action screws to make sure that when we go to take this apart, the action screws aren't set in the epoxy. Got that done. So we're about ready now for, for the epoxy resin. There's really, on, on these fiberglass stocks, there's no stock prep you have to do. Um, if you're doing an aluminum bedding block type, like an HS Precision, I'll usually take some rough sandpaper and, and just rough up that bedding block so that the epoxy resin sticks to it really well. Uh, this fiberglass that these stocks are made out of, is it already sticks pretty well to that stuff, so you, there's really nothing you have to do with this. Um, you want to keep the action in front of you so that you can be looking at where it mates and make sure you put the epoxy where you want it to be. Okay, I have kind of an elaborate epoxy gun here, but uh, it has a static mixing nozzle, but I don't really use it. It's, it's kind of wasteful in my opinion you waste a whole bunch of epoxy in that mixing nozzle. So what I do is just mix the two. It's a two-part. You can see there's a black and a tan colored. So I'm going to just dispense some of each into this little styrofoam cup that I'm going to do my mixing in. And you want to make sure you get plenty of, of adhesive. It would be not good if you do this and and come up short so make sure you got plenty and then if you have a little extra you just kind of want to save that to to check to know when it's hard so just scrape this last little bit and put this away Okay, done with my epoxy, now I'm going to put these gloves on. Probably could have did this one step earlier, but I think I managed to get her in there without getting any on myself. Okay, then we're just going to mix this two-part epoxy, make sure we get it good and mixed. The epoxy I'm using, I mean, again, it's not critical, but what I'm using is actually a panel bonding adhesive from the automotive market. So you can pick it up at 
you know, an, an automotive or body shop type supply place. Uh, good toughened hard epoxy. High tinsel strength. Perfect for, for bedding rifles in my opinion. So that's why we use it. Uh, again, if you want to use Acro Glass from Brownells, obviously that's formulated specifically for the job also. I just like the hot, I do enough of these where I, I use a higher quantity and, and just from a pricing standpoint by getting the larger quantities of this product is just more economical for me than buying individual Acro Glass kits. Okay, I think I got this pretty well mixed. So I'm going to start filling it in and I'm going to start with a pretty good gloop and I'm going to fill it right into the recoil lug recess. And you want to fill this recoil lug recess roughly about two thirds full. And, it, and this depends, depending on what kind of stock you're bedding. Um, certain stocks will have a bigger recess here, so you just want to look at your recoil lug and how big it is versus the hole. You, you want it obviously to be full enough to where you're squeezing it out, but at the same time you don't want to have a huge excess where it squeezes it all out and makes a big mess. And then, these things are inleted very tight, so you just need to have a real thin layer where the action screw the action screw area is on the action so you know just take a little bit and start rubbing it in those areas try not to get any down the action screw hole it'll it'll squeeze itself in there you don't need any extra Okay, and then like I was saying on this particular one I'm gonna I'm gonna skim bed back along the sides of the the magazine opening so same thing I'm just gonna take a real little bit and just put a little bit along those contact points and what like I said what this is gonna do is just make a, a mirror image of the action and I'm going to be looking at where I want to stop and it looks like this trigger screw pin is right at the back side so I don't want to go too much farther than than right where the magazine opening is so I'm going to stop right about there and it doesn't take much here because like I said these are inleted very tight so Okay, I don't want any on that side of the bolt opening. Then there's a little opening here just in front of the safety. I'm gonna I am gonna put just a dab right there. There's no screw holes or, or pin holes in that area, so I'm gonna have a little contact point right there. Okay, and then on the back side, there's a spot basically between the two pins that I'm gonna hit right in this area where it's not not uh, any pinholes so I'm just gonna put another contact point there and don't worry too you know if you get a little bit that goes down below the edge you'll trim that up once it's once it's all set and hardened so I'm gonna go ahead and do this backside the same and I'm gonna just again stop right at the end of the magazine opening because I don't want to get in the area of the, the trigger pins. Okay, just like that. Now we just got this back tang part left where the rear action screw is. And again, this is inleted very tight also, so it just takes a very thin coating of epoxy here to get complete coverage. Okay, now it looks like I got that recoil lug recess 
pretty well that first attempt. A lot of times what will happen is you'll get some, some settling and air bubbles removing and you want to make sure that you get all of those worked out and now that I've played with it I see that there is a bubble in there so I'm going to try and get a little bit more material stuffed into that recoil recess. And you just want to really try and work it down in there to make sure that you don't have any bubbles. And you can kind of hear them popping their way out. You're better off having too much than too little. It's just going to mean a little bit more cleanup when it oozes out. But if you have too little, you might not have complete contact. So let's definitely shoot for having enough. Okay, I think we're very close to there with that. I'm just going to scrape a little bit of this excess in the bottom. Okay, I think we're ready to stick the action in. Okay, so before we stick the action in, you want to make sure you have everything else ready. Now, the way I've done this, there, there's the pillar, aluminum pillars are already in there. So really all the epoxy is up at the top. So the bottom middle, you really don't even have to worry about any release agent or anything. It's not going to get that far down all the way through the screw holes. So you shouldn't have to worry about the bottom metal. So double check that you got release agent on everything you can see it with the wax so I can see I've got everything covered I'm gonna very carefully lower this into the stock I'm gonna get it in position I'm gonna turn it over the bottom metal on and then the screws in and then as far as tightening this we're gonna we're gonna tighten it in and not necessarily torque it but get it snug and what you'll happen to you don't want to squeeze out all the all the bedding compound you're, you're looking to have a little bit of bedding comp oh that was the wrong screw you, you're looking to have a little bedding compound between the action and the stock that's the idea of having it there so I don't want to totally squeeze it all out this particular adhesive another benefit of it is is that it has little glass bead spacers in it so that it can't squeeze out further than those size of those glass beads but because they're glass you actually can crush them so you can actually kind of hear them cracking as you tighten it up and that's usually when I know I'm starting to get snug so I'm gonna tighten until I hear those little cracking I don't know if you'll be able to hear it but snug you don't necessarily have to get full torque, but snug. Then you want to, as a last check, is look over everything and make sure the barrel's sitting in the channel the way you wanted it to so that you've got the right free float. And everything's looking good there. It's centered in the barrel channel. Everything is starting to come together I'm seeing it looks like we got the amount almost perfect it's below the surface of the stock but I can see it just about to come up and that's just something that'll come with experience the backside like I said is already really tight so it's almost impossible to not have a little squeeze out here so just take a paper towel and wipe off any excess um, you can also remove a lot of this excess after it's hardened. If you, this particular adhesive, it takes a little while for it to reach full hardness. So normally what I, I like to do is do this right before bed and then just let it cure overnight. And in the morning, it's definitely hardened enough to pull apart, but it might not be full hardness yet and you can actually cut it without it being brittle and breaking and then you know after 48 hours or so it's gotten to that full hardness state 
but obviously that's going to depend on whatever epoxy resin you end up choosing to go with but I pretty much got the tang all cleaned up there like I said everywhere else it's right at the top of the stock but no farther so <clears throat> it'll just be a little trim job when it's done so obviously we're not going to be able to to show you this finished but after we're done you let this cure all you got to do is screw the screws out pop that bottom metal off and then it's going to take a little bit of pulling but you basically work it front and back just prying here and then once it comes a little bit you can push down on it to pop the rear part out once you're out of the epoxy it'll still be snug but you can just work it work it out front and back and then clean up all your release agent trim around all the openings trim on the sides if you got a little bit of uh, ooze out down into the magazine where there'll be ooze just take a knife clean all that up and then you're ready to reassemble your rifle and you'll find that it goes right together perfectly and once you get the tape off of that recoil lug you'll find that it goes together a lot more smoothly than when you try to pull it out that first time it's definitely snug that first time but there you have it uh, check out our other videos on our YouTube channel and we'll see you next time.